Hey everyone, happy general conference weekend. This next week we'll be studying sections 111 through 114 in the Doctrine and Covenants. And I wanted to share an idea that I find really captivating and that I think can help us and our students kind of reshape some of the relationships we have with each other that might have gone sour. Um, the background of these sections is interesting and a little bit disparate. Section 111, there's a somewhat famous, uh, possibly made up story of Joseph Smith trying to find treasure in a basement in Salem. Um, it's hinted at in the section introduction, and if you read the historical resources the church provides, you can find more information on it. But the church is in debt, and at the very least, we know that Joseph Smith and others have gone to try and uh, find a way to relieve that debt, that burden. And section 112 is about Thomas Marsh, uh, who is president of the Quorum of the Twelve, is trying to solve problems in the Quorum as they have turned somewhat critical of Joseph Smith. And as he's on his way to Kirtland to solve those problems, he finds out that some of the members of the Twelve have been sent on missions to England by Joseph Smith, which he thought was his responsibility. And so it creates friction between him and the prophet. Eventually, of course, Thomas Marsh will leave the church. It's interesting that section 113 is a description of an Isaiah chapter focused on Joseph Smith, or at least the interpretation is focused on him. As I've studied these sections, I've noticed there's a theme running throughout all of them, and the theme is mistakes. In fact, in verse 1 of section 111, the Lord calls them out, and he gives a word to them. He calls them follies. I looked up the definition of the word folly, uh, and it means a want of understanding or a weak or absurd act, not highly criminal, which means these aren't sections about people that have done horrible things. They're just sections about people that have made mistakes. And our students know what that feels like. We know what that feels like to make mistakes. Specifically, their mistakes are in their relationships with other people. And I think we could study these sections and look for what the Lord says about those mistakes. He calls some of them out and what he would have us do or what he would have us think or feel when we make those mistakes. A couple of examples. One, uh, as I studied this with my wife, she pointed out that perhaps the first mistake we often make about our mistakes is that we underestimate how forgiving the Lord is, or we overestimate how upset he is. I love verse one, the Lord's phrasing and emotion. I, the Lord your God, am not displeased with your coming this journey, notwithstanding your follies. Um, I look at my children and sometimes the mistakes they make that they think are just catastrophic, but with the benefit of age and maturity, I can see are minor. And part of my work as a parent is trying to convince my children that their mistakes aren't as big as they think they are. And I think our Heavenly Father probably feels the same about us. I also notice that some of the mistakes are people that are trying to do something good, but in the wrong way. Violet Kimball, who's the wife of Heber C. Kimball, who's on a mission in England, writes to him about some of the discord happening amongst the 12. And I love what she says. She says, now, after all that I have said about this dissenting party, there is some of them that I love and have great feeling and pity for them. I know they have been tried to the very quick. And what grieves me the most of all is that many things which they tell, I have no doubt, but what are too true. Still, I do not think they are justifiable in the course they have taken. Meaning, they're trying to do a good thing, which is to help the church move forward but they're doing it in the wrong way. They've turned critical of the prophet and they've turned uh, somewhat contentious with each other. I think a lot of our mistakes today follow that same trend. We want good outcomes. We want to see change and growth in ourselves or in others or in the church, but we go about it with a contentious spirit and it causes problems. And our students are wrapped up in that. They know people that are critical of the church. Maybe they themselves have fallen into that criticism. We are part of an ongoing restoration to move the church forward, but we are not to go about it in anything less than a Christ-like way, which is filled with love, with forgiveness, and with grace for all. Now, there are many other mistakes that are mentioned here. Thomas Marsh is called out for uh, his heart. And you can find some of them, and hopefully you can help students identify some of them 
importantly in the scriptures, maybe more importantly in their own lives, and then with a very optimistic tone, help them to find ways to address those mistakes and feel that Christ can help them overcome them, heal because of them, and help others to do the same. God bless you as you study this week. Thanks for studying with me.